Today we're going to perform a procedure known as dye trimming. By the way, my name is Dr. John Antonelli, and uh, we are going to perform a procedure uh, entitled dye trimming, which is a procedure that is performed on removable dyes of master casts for the purpose of removing all of the free gingival margin on the dye 360 degrees around the dye and by doing so uh, we uncover the finish line make the finish line a lot more accessible for waxing perfect margins so the process uh, called dye removing is really a rather simple process that takes uh, just a few minutes to accomplish and once performed correctly uh, as I said before the finish line on the dye will be ac accessible and waxing and trimming will be far far uh, far easier to accomplish so without any further ado let's go to dye trimming the instrument that I like to use for die trimming is the pear-shaped slow speed bar. It's a carbide laboratory bar. It has a cutting edge on the tip that is approximately two and a half millimeters in diameter. The cutting edge along the side of the bar is approximately five millimeters in length. So it's the ideal bar for die trimming. I would suggest when die trimming uh, use eye protection because this will uh, kick up some dust and some particles and probably a mask is also a good idea. So we're using our meal motor for this uh, procedure. We'll turn on the meal motor at this point. And generally I will uh, turn on the rheostat so the burr is rotating at either medium or high medium speed. Uh, when the burr rotates at a very low speed there is a greater chance of the flutes grabbing onto or engaging the gypsum in the dye and, and subsequently causing the bird to skip, which in turn can uh, lead to damage, damage to the dye. So it's best to, as I said, rotate uh, the burr at medium or medium high speed. So we're going to begin, using magnification, we're going to begin the dye trimming process. We'll start trimming the dye at approximately two millimeters apical to the, to the uh, finish line. And we do that simply by applying light pressure and a good finger rest, thumbs resting against one another. We slowly engage the burr, remaining all the while at least two millimeters below the free gingival margin. Finger rest is essential in this case to prevent any inadvertent movement of the burr into the finish line. Essentially what we're doing is we're undermining the stone that comprises the free gingival margin. By undermining the stone, as you can see, we're left with a small lip of gypsum here that represents the, uh, the free gingival margin, and that small lip of, of gypsum product can be removed quite easily with a very sharp number 25 blade, as you'll see me doing momentarily. Again, I continue to undermine this area without... Uh, without going anywhere near closer than about two to three millimeters of the free of the uh, finish line on the tooth preparation okay. okay Okay, I've just about completed that aspect of die trimming. And as you can see now, we're left with a small lip of gypsum product. 
that represents part of the free gingival margin. The very next step involves removing that uh, portion of stone using a number 25 very sharp blade, preferably a new blade that, that uh, is less apt to slip and cause you to cut your finger. And uh, the other advantage, again, of a very uh, sharp blade is the fact that uh, you will not have to exert nearly as much pressure when removing the stone. Now, when removing the stone, pressure, light pressure is exerted in an apical direction, just as I'm doing right now. The idea is to, as I said, expose at least four, anywhere from three to five millimeters of finish line in your tooth preparation or external bevel if we're talking about inlays and onlays. So once again, I'm cutting in an apical direction. Just about finished. And now you'll, you'll notice how much more accessible the free gingival margin is. So much so, in fact, that if you take the side of a red pencil, you can mark that margin with a red pencil by simply pressing very lightly and allowing the red pencil to I inadvertently marked the upper part of the die there. You can ignore that, but you can see what I'm doing in this case. Very, very light pressure against the die with the wax pencil. It's all that is necessary. And there you have it. This is a perfectly marked dye, and the reason that red is used is it forms is a color that contrasts nicely with the blue color of inlay wax, so there's no mistaking about where the margin is. And again, as you can see, the shape of the root itself along the side of the dye approximates the root of this particular tooth, which is a molar, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, any excessive um, trimming of the dye in this uh, particular area will result in a wax up which is over contoured and that's of course what we're trying to avoid. Thank you.